Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Greenbelt Chapel's online Lenten Recollection Part 2. Our guest speaker for tonight used to frequent Greenbelt Chapel to visit the Blessed Sacrament after a hard day's work. Prior to entering the seminary in 2006, he was a CPA, Certified Public Accountant, working in one of the leading auditing firms here in Makati. Currently, he is the director of the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School Campus Ministry. Let us now listen to Reverend Father Ro Atilano Jr. from the Society of Jesus as he reflects on the Sacrament of Confirmation. I've seen every tear that you cried The fears and the failures you struggled hard The worthiness doubted beneath all that pride The visions and dreams left behind I know your remorse and regret the secrets and stories you ache to forget So many people you die to be yet I choose you I choose you Do you know why I choose you? I choose you
I invite you now to go back to the song that was played. Go back to a particular line, to a particular word that moved you. You may also go back to a particular image from the video that moved you in a special way. What did you feel about it? What do you think is God's message to you at this moment through this word, through this line, or through this image? What recent experiences come back to your memory at this point when you were moved by this particular word, line, or image? Just spend some time talking to God about this and rest in his presence. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will ever be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, um, I'm here to share to you some points on confirmation and as a sacrament of initiation as, and some points for reflection, especially during this time of Lent. Also, as we prepare for the 500 years of Christianity here in the Philippines. No, biruin nyo. 500 years na, and uh, we are so blessed that the 500 years, the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity uh, is happening during our lifetime. Napaka laking biyaya para sa atin. And so, um, uh, last time you were um, asked to reflect on, uh, on the sacrament of baptism. Now, we will discuss and share points about ano nga ba ang sak ang, ang ang sakramento ng kumpil. No? Um, marami sa atin um, kasi required sa, sa eskwelahan kaya, or required sa parish, no? kaya tayo um, uh, nagpakumpil. Ang iba naman, naka, naka, uh, nakatakas, kaya <laughs> hindi nakasama sa, sa pagkumpil o walang, walang oportunidad. Kaya bago ikasal, nako, nag-aalala nag na kasi hindi pa pala nakumpilan. Kaya Kasi bagong ikasal, kailangan nakumpilan na. Kaya malaking problema pag hindi pa nakumpilan. Kaya ano nga ba ang sakramento ng kumpil? No? What is the sacrament of, it, the sacrament of um, confirmation? No? Remember, we have uh, seven sacraments and the first three sacraments is uh, what we call the sacrament of initiation. No? Ano ba nga ba ang sacraments of initiation. Sa noong panahong uh, noong unang panahon nung uh, nung uh, bago pa no uh, yung yung uh, yung yung, uh, yung sa ating kasaysayan ng pagiging Kristiyano, sabay yan no yung yung sabay binibigay yung sakramento ng binyag, ng kumpil at ng ng communion no. Uh, so over time tayo sa sa Roman Catholic Church no yung baptism ay nasa uh, pagkabata pagkatapos nung nasa tamang edad na with right reasoning at saka makapag decision na saka nabibigyan ng pagkakataon para matanggap ang sakramento ng kumpil mga kapatid ano nga ba ang sakramento ng kumpil no kailangan natin ng counting review kung ano nga ba ito meron akong video na ipapakita sa inyo para maintindihan natin kung ano ang sakramento ng kumpil eto Why do I have to get confirmed if I was already baptized as a baby? Have you ever tried sitting on a stool with only two legs? It doesn't work very well. A stool needs at least three legs, otherwise it'll fall over. 
Well, you can kind of think of confirmation in the same way. Confirmation is one of the three sacraments of initiation in the Catholic Church. The sacraments of Christian initiation, baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist, lay the foundations of every Christian life. The faithful are born anew by baptism, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation, and receive in the Eucharist the food of eternal life. So it's a three-legged stool, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Without confirmation, you won't have the support you'll need to sustain you on your journey of faith. And in some ways, confirmation can be seen as the beginning of that journey. Think of the apostles, for example. Many of them had been around Jesus for years and had even been baptized. But it wasn't until Pentecost that the Holy Spirit came upon them and took them to the next level of faith. They were no longer merely receivers of God's word, they were doers of God's word. That's how it works with confirmation. The church sees this sacrament as kind of a personal Pentecost for each of us, the beginning of our mission to live a Christian life. And because we know that doing that can be quite difficult at times, at our confirmation, we receive the right tools to help us on our journey of faith. And by tools, I mean the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Courage. This gives us the strength to stand up for what is right in spite of popular opinion. Wisdom. This allows us to see God working in the world always and everywhere. Understanding, by which we are given a deeper insight into the truths of our faith. Knowledge, not quite the same thing as wisdom. With this gift, we are able to recognize God's purpose for our lives. Right judgment, sometimes called counsel. This allows us to recognize the difference between right and wrong and choose right. Reverence, sometimes called piety, this gives us the ability to recognize our need for God. Fear of the Lord. This isn't a fear of punishment, but rather recognition of the enormity and glory of God and our desire to do right by Him. So as you can see, baptism is a great start, but without confirmation, you're missing out on a lot. In fact, these gifts of the Holy Spirit were promised to us by Jesus himself. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. That's how Jesus prepared his disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. Today, we also need to prepare for the Sacrament of Confirmation. For starters, you'll need to take a Confirmation class. These are usually offered as part of religious education programs at most parishes. Now, since there is no set age for confirmation, it varies widely depending on the diocese, anywhere from infancy to 16 years of age. But if you're older than that, don't worry about being stuck in class with a group of teenagers. Many parishes offer confirmation preparation for adults as well. And because this sacrament is about taking Christian values out into the world, there is often a service component involved. Now, you don't have to do all this on your own. Everyone preparing to be confirmed gets to choose a sponsor someone who's already confirmed and actively practicing their Catholic faith. A sponsor is a sort of mentor figure who can offer you guidance and prayers. So it's probably best to choose someone who you feel comfortable talking to about spiritual matters and someone who most likely will be a part of your life after you're confirmed. You might be given the option of choosing a confirmation name. Historically, a believer received a new name to mark a new phase in their life. So again, this reminds us that confirmation is the start of something new. Usually, the name chosen is that of a saint that you admire and hope to emulate. This helps to deepen your bond with the larger faith community. Another indication that confirmation brings about a more fully realized membership in the body of Christ is that the diocesan bishop is usually the minister of this sacrament. The bishop's presence reminds us that those being confirmed are now sent into the world to spread the good news, just as Jesus sent forth the apostles to continue his mission. Now that we've talked about what confirmation is, let's be sure we know what it's not. Confirmation is not a rite of passage. It's not the same as a bar mitzvah or other similar coming-of-age rites for young people. It's also not just another religious hoop to jump through. Confirmation is the completion of the grace we received at baptism and the invitation to mature in the Christian life. And it's certainly not graduation from church. Yes, confirmation completes your Christian initiation, but it is just the beginning of a life of bringing the Christian message out into the world. Remember, like all the sacraments, 
Confirmation is transformative. It changes who we are and who we are capable of becoming. We move from hearing God's Word to sharing it. Confirmation gives us the grace that makes it possible to truly live a Christian life. Confirmation, therefore, is the perfection of baptism. It is per, confirmation is perfects the baptismal grace, no? Iba na binyagan tayo nung tayo yung mga bata pa. So, sa confirmation, ito yung parang fullness of the grace that we have received. A kind of a, um, it, it, it empowers us, no? Parang nabubuhay yung mga biyayang, yung mga grasyang natanggap natin nung, nung tayo na binyagan. Maraming nagtatanong kung bakit tayong mga Katoliko. Um, bakit nga ba uh, ta- binibinyagan uh, yung isang Katoliko nung siya'y bata pa? Hindi pa naman nakakasakot yung bata. Hindi pa yung, ma- hindi yung bata, hindi pa, makaka- hindi pa siya makakapag-desisyon kung siya nga ba ay gusto maging Katoliko, gusto maging Kristiyano. No? Um, kaya kung papansin natin sa, sa, sa ating uh, 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 pagbibinyag, ang magulang at ang mga ninong at ninang ang sumasagot doon sa mga baptismal promises no at um, sa profession of faith din syempre hindi makakasagot yung sanggol pero kapag yung isang kristiyano ay nasa tamang edad na no sa kumpil sa sacrament of confirmation tatanong tatanungin ulit no ng obispo tatanungin ulit yung tinanong ng pare nung tayo na binyagan. Pero this time, it will not be the parents or the godparents who will answer the questions. It will be us. So, ibig sabihin, yung sakramento ng kumpil, parang may, ito na yung talagang pinili mo na. Ikaw na yung pumili. Gusto kong maging kristyano. Gusto kong maging katoliko. Pinili ko na ito. Hindi lang pinili ng aking magulang. Kaya marami kasi nagsasabi sa atin na parang we were parang uh, baptized into the, into the faith when we were children. Tama yun. But through the sacrament of confirmation, we are given the chance to own the faith, to choose the faith, and to own the faith. And though in such a way, we are empowered. Kaya parang yung sacrament, yung, 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 uh, yung nangyari sa mga apostoles, no? yung... Um, Pentecost. They receive the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, ibig sabihin yan, mga kapatid, when we are confirmed, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do the will of God. Alam nyo, katulad nung um, sakramento ng binyag, meron ding anointing na ginagawa sa sakramento ng kumpil. Ganun din sa sakramento ng pagpapare, meron ding anointing na ginagawa. Yung anointing of... of um, nagin- This is an ancient practice, no? But anointing is really a kind of a missioning. Ibig sabihin, when we are confirmed, we are sent as missionaries as well. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, We are sent to proclaim the word. We are sent to be God's instrument in the world. So mahalaga yan, no? Na, na when we are confirmed, hindi lang siya parang um, uh, simpleng um, uh, right. Isipin natin na sacrament of confirmation, pinili ko na to. At binigyan na ako ng mission. Susunod ko, isusundin ko na ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Paano nga mamalaman kung sumusunod tayo sa kalooban ng Panginoon? No? Sabi ni St. Paul, malalaman natin sa pangamagitan ng bunga. No? Kanina sa video na panood natin yung the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Pero meron ring Fruits of the Holy Spirit. Paano nga malaman kung, kung 
hinahayaan natin ang Espiritu Santo gumalaw sa ating buhay. Paano nga ba malaman kung ginagawa natin ang kalooban ng Diyos? Paano nga ba malaman kung tayo sumusunod doon sa ujok ng Espiritu Santo sa ating kalooban? Malalaman natin sa bunga, no? sa fruits of the Holy Spirit. Ano-ano ito? No? Malalaman natin kung kinagawa natin ang kalooban ng Diyos, kung empowered tayo by the Holy Spirit, if we become more loving, more joyful, more patient, more peaceful, more kind, better, more faithful, more gentle, with more self-control, and uh, and all these gifts we receive, we find ourselves becoming closer to God. No? Yan sa mga sulat, no? Uh, sa sulat ni San Pablo para sa mga Galatians. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When we were when we were confirmed, we are given the gifts of the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Lord. But how do we know if we are actually doing God's will by the fruits? So we can ask ourselves, no? Whatever we do right now, we're serving the church maybe as, as uh, volunteers or maybe as uh, we're, we're uh, serving in, in, in different organizations. We ask ourselves, am I becoming more loving as a Christian? More patient, more kind, gentle, peaceful, patient, faithful with self-control and gentleness. Let us ask ourselves those questions. Because in the end, this is the will of the Lord for us to become the better versions of ourselves. Sai Pangani Saint Irenaeus, the glory of God is man fully alive. We glorify the Lord when we use our fullest potentials, our gifts, and then we bear fruit. Ang sabi nga ni Jesus no? sa Ebanghelyo sa ni San Juan, ang sino man mananahan sa akin, mananahan din ako sa kanya at bumunga ng masagana. Bumunga siya ng masagana. Maybe as we, um, uh, most of us are already confirmed, no? Not, kasi um, siguro na-confirm tayo when we were in high school. Most of us are already confirmed. So remember that, my dear friends, when we were confirmed, we chose this faith. We said yes to the Lord with full freedom. And so we allow the Lord's gift in us in order for us to do the will of the Lord and become better Christians, to become more loving, gentle, peaceful, patient, kind, with self-control and gentleness and faithfulness. So we ask ourselves these questions. Am I allowing the grace of the Lord, the grace of the Holy Spirit, to fully make me become the better versions of myself in order for me to glorify the Lord? Nung baga para baga ang ganito, nung tayo na kumpilan, binigyan na lahat, 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 lahat ng biyaya. Lahat-lahat ng grasya. Nariyan na. Binuhos na lahat. But do we allow no, these gifts that we have to bear fruits? So my dear friends, as we celebrate 500 years of Philippine Christianity, no? Gifted to give. Ganda ng tema. Gifted to give. Nabiyayaan, kaya nagbibigay. Ganun din ang kumpil. Ganun din ang sakramento ng kumpil. Nabiyayaan tayo ng gifts of the Holy Spirit, kaya tayo nagbibigay. Gifted to give. Kaya tayo 
nagiging missionaries, no? Sent. Yan yung ano, yan yung uh, yan yung sakramento ng kumpil. We are sent. We are gifted with the gifts of the Holy Spirit so we can be sent out into the world to become God's presence in this broken world. But we are equipped. No? God has equipped us when we were confirmed to be God's presence in the world. Kaya napakaganda nung, uh, nung, nung ating tema. It's a reminder for all of us that we are gifted. Yes, we are gifted. And it's very important that we acknowledge our giftedness. And what is the effect when we acknowledge our giftedness? Gratitude. The moment we realize that everything comes from the Lord, the moment we realize that nothing is really ours, think about this, my dear friends. Think about what you have right now. Whatever you have right now, do you think these are really yours? These were gifted to you. Now think about the people you care, your friends, your loved ones, your family members. Mm. Even them, they are gifts gifted to us. Think about your own very life. Think about the breath. Since you were born, you were breathing. You were breathing. And until now, of course, you continue to breathe. Do you think it's yours? Ah, it can be taken away from you. Sa mga katuwid, lahat, lahat ay biyaya ng Panginoon. At kapag napagtanto natin, when we realize that nothing is really mine, everything is God's, everything is gift, the result is gratitude. And so therefore, kapag ang puso ay marunong magpasalamat, aapaw, liglig, siksik, umaapaw sa iba. Gifted to give. Magbibigay. Magbibigay. So, why do we serve? Why do we serve the church? Why do we go to mass? Why do we do good? Why do we forgive? Why, why, uh, why, why do we volunteer? Why do we strive to be a better Christian? To be a better Catholic? Kasi biniyayaan na ko. Una akong minahal ng Diyos. Una akong biniyayaan ng Diyos. Parang yung kanta kanina sa opening prayer. Wonderfully made. God chose me before I chose Him. God has loved me before I learned to love Him. And so therefore, our service, our, our acts of goodness, these are spontaneous response of an experience of being loved and forgiven. Gifted to give. And that's precisely what confirmation is all about. We have been gifted by the Lord so much, sobra, sobra, Liglig, siksik, umaapaw. Kaya, naglilingkod tayo. Nagbibigay tayo. Nagmamahal tayo. Nagpapatawad tayo. Gratitude, my dear friends, is the key. Kaya nga, sa lahat-lahat ng ito, ano ba yung kapag tayo nakumpilan, ano yung ating pakiramdam? Pasasalamat, Lord. Lord, maraming salamat. Biniyayaan mo ako. Maraming salamat. Tinawag mo ako parang misyonero. Tatanggapin ko, Lord. Gifted to give. 500 years na ang Philippine na Christianity and we are invited to continue to give this gift of faith that we have. And that is the challenge for all of us. Napaganda. Gifted to give. Kaya gratitude, my dear friends, is really the key. No? Gratitude is the key. Everything comes from the Lord. Nothing is really mine. 
naalala ko tuloy yung kwento ni Brother Richie Fernando. Hindi ko alam kung narinig nyo na yung kwento ni Brother Richie Fernando. Si Brother Richie Fernando ay isang seminarista at uh, siya ay um, nadestino doon sa Cambodia no, bilang isang seminarista. At uh, siya, siya ay nadestino doon sa isang uh, center no, ng mga handicap. At uh, doon sa center of the handicap, isang araw, may isang studyante na may dala siyang granada. Hindi rin alam kung bakit meron siyang granada, pero apparently the, the boy was troubled, mentally troubled. And um, the boy was about to enter a room full of students. And Brother Richie Fernando saw this troubled boy uh, about to enter this classroom full of students. Immediately, he went no, towards the boy, grabbed the boy, and in the process, saving the life of the boy and a classroom full of students, and in the process, offering his own life. He died as a missionary and as a martyr. In trying to save the life of others, Richie gave up his own. He died in 1996. At the age of 26. Napakabata. Weeks before he died, his best friend, uh, he wrote to his best friend. No? Si Richie Fernando wrote to his best friend back in the Philippines and his best friend uh, received a letter from Brother Richie Fernando. And in that letter, he said, I know where my heart is. It is with the Lord. I know where my heart is. It is with Jesus Christ who is in the poor and the marginalized. I remember the story of Brother Richie Fernando because for me, no, this is, this is the life of um, a person who is confirmed in faith, willing to give everything because everything has been given to me by the Lord. And so therefore, I offer back everything to the Lord. And for me, Brother Richie Fernando is a, a very good example of what it takes to be a person confirmed in faith with courage to do the mission of the Lord, to do the will of the Lord. And what was striking for me is, is this. Sa loob ng ilang segundo, hindi na isang segundo eh, sa loob ng, ng uh, isang segundo siguro, nakapag-isip ka agad siya kung anong gagawin. At ang gagawin niya ay iaalay niya yung buhay niya para sa kapwa. Nalala ko tuloy sinabi ni Jesus, there is no greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And that's our call, my dear friends. All of us confirmed in the faith because we accepted God's invitation and we said yes when we were confirmed to do the mission entrusted to us by the Lord. Meaning to say, kapag tayo'y nakumpilan, nung umuo tayo sa Panginoon, sa imbitasyon ng Panginoon, may paninindigan na tayo, may commitment na. No? Parang yung, halimbawa, yung sakramento ng kasal, may commitment na sa, sa yung mag-asawa sa isa't isa. When we were confirmed, my commitment na tayo bilang isang Kristiyano. Hindi lang pwede maging isang passive Catholic. Hindi na pwede maging isang nominal Catholic na parang katoliko lang ako sa pangalan. When we were confirmed, hindi na. We were gifted by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord 
not just to be nominal Catholics, not just to be Christians by name, but to be true witnesses in the faith. Lahat tayo misyonero nung tayo ay nakumpilan. Kasi umuo tayo, di ba? May paninidigan tayo. Mayroon tayong pananagutan. May commitment na tayo as Christians, as Catholics. Napakaganda, di ba? Ang sakramento ng kumpil, yung pala yun. <laughs> Kaya ang impitasyon sa atin, mga kapatid, na yung panahon ng pandemya, mahirap. Maraming nawala ng trabaho. Marami nagkasakit, may mga namatay, marami nalungkot, may mga na-depressed din. Mahirap. Ang invitasyon sa atin, ang challenge sa atin, how can we live out this vocation, this mission entrusted to us by the Lord to bring the word of God and to be God's presence to the people around us? especially those who are suffering. How can we be God's instruments of faith, hope, and love? How can we witnesses, how can we be witnesses of faith, hope, and love especially during this time of the pandemic. That's my challenge for all of you, my dear friends. And I'd like to end there. Lahat naman tayo ay nakumpilan na. And we have accepted the invitation of the Lord. And we have said yes to the Lord already when we were confirmed. So during this pandemic, we are challenged by virtue of the sacrament of confirmation to be witnesses of God's faith, hope, and love to everyone. How can we be true witnesses of faith, hope, and love during this time of crisis? When we were confirmed, we said yes to do God's will. We said yes to follow Jesus. We said yes to the mission entrusted to the Lord, entrusted by the Lord to us. And so, let us not be scared. Let us not be afraid because the Lord is with us. He will be with us no matter what. Bilang pagtatapos, I invite you to just spend some few moments of silence. And maybe if you have a pen there, if you have a notebook, or kung meron ka bang papel dyan, or if you don't have these, you can use your phones. I want I invite you now to, to, to compose your prayer of commitment. Dapat ginawa natin to nung, ano, nung, nung panahon ng nakumpilan tayo. No? Pero pwede pa rin ngayon, no? a kind of a renewal of commitment. I invite you now to compose your personal commitment to the Lord. Di ba parang kapag kinasal, merong vows. No? May, may, meron pang uso ngayon yung personal vows. No? Compose your own personal vow to the Lord as a confirmed Catholic. Spend some time doing this. No? You may... Um, do this uh, now or later. Try composing your own or vow to the Lord. A kind of a recommitment, a renewal of commitment.
Let us just pause for, for a few minutes as we do this. At this point, I invite you to, to read no, um, your prayer of commitment before the Lord no, in your respective uh, sacred places. I, at home, in your room, before an altar, I invite you now to, to read from the heart. Read before the Lord your prayer of commitment your personal vows to God. A reminder of your sacrament of confirmation. A kind of a renewal of vows. I invite you now to do this. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
You may now quietly or aloud in your respective homes before an altar, before the Lord, to read your prayer of commitment or your personal. Lord, maraming salamat po sa lahat ng biyayang ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. Higit sa lahat, sa biyaya ng Espiritu Santo at biyaya ng iyong presensya. Naway, hindi kami makalimot, Panginoon, nagpasalamat. At maalala ang lahat ng biyayang ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. Nang sa gayon, Panginoon, maging masigasig kami sa pagtupad ng iyong kalooban pagsunod sa yapak mo at paglilingkod sa kapwa. Panginoon, gabayan niyo kami nang sa ganon lagi kami, Panginoon, lagi kami maging mas mapalapit sa inyo. Pinili namin ito sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God be upon you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming salamat po. In behalf of our chaplain, Reverend Father June Sescon, we would like to thank Father Ro Atilano Jr. for helping us appreciate the sacrament of confirmation. Brothers and sisters, thank you once again for watching. And we hope to see you again tomorrow night, same time, for the third and last part of our online Lenten recollection. Thank you, good night, and God bless.